Hallelujah. Riverstone. Riverstone. Oh my God, it is. Oh my God, it is. Hey guys, like I was speaking in the other film, I, it's still up for debate of what we can tow with this F-450. Um, based on what it can tow is, kind of leads us to what unit we would like to choose for it. Um, on, the, on the higher end, we like the DRV. DRVs are made with solid wood and they got steel frame, best frames, and, but, that's, but they're heavy. And if I, can't, if I can't pull it, then, you know, I have to look at other options. Well, when I was looking at other options that are actually lighter, but then still have wood and really have some, uh, some structure to it. I guess th their walls are 16 on center, but I think they're aluminum, but at least at the front, the frame is still like the DRV. So maybe it's a good combination between, you know, the, the rigid tough frame and then not being so heavy. So it, like I said, after I started to see the LX455 may be too heavy for us to tow, we started looking at the Nashville. The DRV Nashville, was also 24,000 pounds, but we like that front living area because we could cut it off for the kids when they come to stay. You just put a curtain, I think Montana's done that. You put a curtain, they pull out the couches and they got their own space. We also need one and a half bathrooms. Anyway, looking at that, looking at other options of what to tow, we came to realize that the Riverstone Legacy RBFL is a very viable option. It's the front living like we like. So without further ado, here's that. Is that your Riverstone? Yeah. You got it. Y'all got a Forest River guy here? Yeah, he's in there. Oh, was he in there? Yeah, the rep for Riverstone. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm Rocky with Riverstone. Rocky, good to meet you, sir. I was wondering if you could help me out like with the axles, the suspension, um, what the wall construction, what how thick are the walls? What what you use in the material of the cabinets, the roof? Because this is the Riverstone Legacy, right? I've been looking online. You know, we want to get into this. This is a model that we're truly considering, okay. the RBFL. Because okay. that front living, there's just nothing like it. When you get up there, it has that residential yes, feel. Yes, sir. Well, you know, let, let's start off. Let's, let's, let's start off and what makes us different from everybody else. The one we start with a 12 inch I beam frame, okay? Okay. So we got a 12 inch IB frame that runs all the way from here all the way down. And of course we do like everybody else, we do a drop frame here to create this basement storage and run it here. And then we come up, come up here and then we tie it into the kingpin area here with the frame. Okay. Now, where we start to differ is that when this thing is sitting on the truck, all the weight is right here. And it's going to flex. I don't care how many gusts that you put in, it's going to flex, okay? Yes. Flexing is great to a point, mm. but when you get fiberglass attached to it, it that cracks. flexing sometimes cracks the fiberglass, sure. okay? Especially when you get slide outs. Mm. So to eliminate that, what we've done is this is a true box beam frame, steel frame that comes all the way down to here, ties in here and there, which eliminates that stress nice. problem. Okay, so now you get two points where you hold it. You come up in here, and you'll notice it's all steel framing. So the whole upper deck is on top of steel. So you get a five eighths inch sun group plywood four inch on top of steel. Un unlike aluminum. I've seen wood. aluminum. See the see the aluminum framing. But I've never seen steel. Yeah, it will give because it's 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 it's, it's a frame up that they have to do here, so it gives. Gotcha. This steel doesn't give. So that floor is solid up there. Whether you have the living room up there, the kitchen up there, or the bedroom area up there, it is fantastic mm -hmm. on it. Okay. All right. So you'll notice how clean all this is. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing. This is a legacy package, so you have the water manifold system. Yeah, you can shut okay. off one instead of all of it. Exactly. So that pex, pex piping goes from here to the faucet in one continuous run. Okay? Okay. So you'll have no seams in between, no 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 breakups, no fittings, none of that good stuff there. So now you can eliminate 
you take any faucet and totally shut it off and still use all the whole water system yes. in your unit, okay? T tell me, talk to me about tongue uh, pinway, would okay. you? And, and your balancing, are you like, how do we find out the pin weight on, like, say, this unit? Pin I know weight, each one could be different. Each, right. The pin weight on these on these units here, in the book, we try to keep our pin weights around 2,800 to 3,000 pounds. Okay. okay. We do not want to overload the truck as sure. much, okay, in right. it. The way you accomplish that is that when you build the first one, you place your axles onto your frame, and then when you do the way up after the unit is built, if you find it heavy, we have the luxury that we can actually, on the second unit, move those axles back or forth oh, wow. to give us that balance the act. balance act that's required to make this thing pull so smoothly. Wow, that's Born amazing. It, okay? So yes. because of the way we build it and design it, we could actually have that capability of doing it. And then we get pin weights right where we want them. On one it, one okay? other thing I've, I'm noticing right off is I think on the legacy, yeah. it's standard to have the... Um, the slide top. No, sir. That's an option for all it of them. It is option. It just they ha they have happen to option it on this unit here. Now the beautiful thing about our our slide toppers as well as our awnings, they all have that metal wrap. So when you're traveling and those awnings are in, they're protected from oh, road debris gotcha. and everything else because there is an aluminum wrap around. Oh, I see it. So they got a nice secure little home when it. Yes, sir. I've seen truck bed covers do that where they go into a little sleeve. Like, oh, I see that. Nice. Well, in Texas, you don't have to worry about that sun beating down on them when you're storing oh, yeah. them, and they're getting dry rot. And Speaking of sun, what, what kind of roof are we dealing with? TPO. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 we chose TPO because it's more durable than rubber. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is pliable, but it's only pliable in one direction. So we run a straight roof line where everybody else tapers their roof to their front or to the rear. TPO doesn't work well because when you go to stretch over that coming down, it forms creases and it doesn't stretch in a second direction like rubber does to take the creases out, Safe. okay? But since we do a straight roof line with a nice radius roof to it, we can, all we have to do is stretch in one direction like it's designed, so we can use TPO. Now, TPO, you do not have to treat like you do rubber on it. You don't. You do not, you just have to wash it, okay? Okay. Very, very So just wash it, keep it clean and seals, right? That's it, that's it, and you okay. check your caulking. Caulking? Always check your caulking sure. around your plumbing cuts, okay? Yeah. But TPO has been a wonderful product for us on it. And what's really, what really made it is that we used to paint to the top of the roof. You can paint on TPO, but you can't paint on rubber. Uh, so that shows you some of the durability. Okay. In it. That's why I was thinking it was a cap on some of them. Right. Those. And, right. and the, the cabinets inside, If we when we move inside, what are they? They're wood cabinets? All wood cabinets. We don't no. use any vinyl wrap, wood or vinyl wrap OSB or vinyl wrap cardboard in our cabinetry. It is all solid wood. That some of those, they, yeah, they're kind of junky. The hinges start to kind of, yes, you see some sawdust inside. Right, the, and then we, we, we also use the soft close hinges really? as okay, well as nice. the soft close cabinet drawers guides. Okay. So everything's soft close for us on it, okay? Well, this is the one, this yeah. is the one. Six point auto level is standard for us on it. Our main slides, this is not a main slide. This is this is a little race floor slide. This happens to be just the sofa slides in it. But all our main slides are hydraulic. Okay. Even the bedroom slide is hydraulic. Okay. That bedroom slide weighs more than most people think it does. Yeah. And they always try to switch over to electric slides there or cable slides. Not the best fit for it. Hydraulic's always the better fit for that slide. But where we're different from everybody else nice. is that we manifold our slides. So each slide has an independent button. So it's not like the most hydraulic slides where you press one button and the slide with the least resistance goes out right. and then the next one comes out. Us, each slide has its own button. So if you want to just run this slide out, you just find that button and press it and you run that slide out. Okay, so they, they operate kind of like the electric slides do with individual switches yes. and motors, but we do it with hydraulics because of, uh, of man we manifold it, okay? okay. Now, on our lighter slides, because I can't put a hydraulic ram in here because they're a race floor slide, we have to go to an electric slide on that. Mm. But we only do that on real light slides. Gotcha. You know, slides that can handle, you know, the, where the electrical mechanism can handle the slide itself without any problems. Okay, I have some questions about the axles and the brakes. Yes, sir. Axles on these units here are 8,000 pound Dexter axles. Okay. We use the Dexter and not 
the uh, Lippert, and it's not that Lippert makes a bad axle, okay? They have very much improved their axles. It's just their dealer network throughout the country is still limited. Mm -hmm. So by going with Dexter, if you have an actual problem and you're in Florida, say, you can get parts and components and get that actual repaired so much easier than it is to try to find a, 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 a Lippert axle yeah. or Lippert component, and sometimes they're not available. It becomes a nightmare. With Dexter, it's just easy, easy, easy network to deal with, and that's what we want for you, okay? 8,000 pound axles, okay? Standard on a regular Riverstone, and you're talking legacy, so you could be a little bit different, I explain that. Comes, we use a heavy duty electric brake system. It's a three and three eighths by 12 and a quarter. The standard RV uses a two by 12. We use a much bigger braking system, so you got a lot more stopping power. But because you're looking at doing a legacy package, and it is all also optional on this year, we do the electrical hydraulic brake system in it. And that's, that's absolutely the best way to go. Mm -hmm. you, you but that is an option. That is an option unless you do legacy. That's standard in the legacy package. Standard in the legacy. Standard in the legacy package. So if you do legacy package, you're going to standardly get the disc brakes. You're going to get upgraded to the Goodyear H-rated tire, okay. and you're also going to go to the water manifold system. And there's some other things that full you body get paint. With it. Full body paint standard on the standard legacy package. Yes, and that's a true full body paint. That's four different colors that we use, and. They paint it off. So we got a front cap and a rear cap, obviously. Front cap and rear cap, uh, unless you go to our toy haulers. The only one we do, our toy, we call them toy haulers. I call them garage units. Garage we unit. make two garage units that have door on the back, so you can't obviously put a cap on that. But everything else, we do a front and rear cap on. And the three slides, is that an option or is that standard? Because that is nice, too. With, with three slides. With, I mean, not slides, I'm sorry. Three slide. awnings. Yeah. The, the, the uh, Dual awning system on this particular unit is an option. Okay, on our on our uh, garage units, they're standard with two. But on most, just about all, but the front kitchen and the RE model, the uh, 37 MRE model is the only ones that cannot accept or have place to put two awnings as of right now. We're working on changing that. Can you talk to me about tanks? I mean, we got two bathrooms in this unit, correct? Yes. So yeah, they, do they share they one? Uh, There's a master bath that has two, and this particular unit has two lavatories, two basins in it, okay? You have a nice shower area, you have a nice commode area, lots of storage. The half bath unit is where we put the washer and dryer at, mm. we put your nice uh, ceramic commode, and we also put your little lavatory. Right, right and those go, those go to one black tank? Uh, Both bathrooms to one black, or no, sir, no, sir. When you have a dual bath system, you get two black tanks. Okay. Okay. That is standard. Now you're going to get uh, in this particular unit here. You also have two gray tanks as well. Nice. Yeah, gray for the bath and mm. gray for the gallon. Well, kind of nice. You got to that's two. You got to empty, but <laughs> but well, it's good to have. The, we try to, to right, but we try to get them time all into one outlet, one dump. Right. Very oh, it has one dump. Yes. Come on. <laughs> they don't all do that, buddy. Hello. Yeah. Because we have that happen on the 2350. We, on this particular unit here, it all dumps right here. Mm hmm. Let's see a grand design do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I think I have it locked. And, and, th and, and when you do the legacy, you get upgraded to the LCI waste management system, which is a sewer hose. Uh, that's attached. Right. And you can leave it permanently if you want. Of course, it's easy to disconnect. You can always add to it if you want. But uh, it comes in a box here, so you know where the sewer hose is. There's no messing with it. And also, on the, on the end of the sewer hose comes a uh, 90 degree valve handle with a clear piece right here, so you can, when you're doing your black tank flush, mm -hmm. you can tell when it's clean. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. when you're finished, I don't care which hose you have, when you go to pick that thing up, there's always something left in it, okay? Yeah, oh, yeah. Here there's a valve, you close the valve. So if there's anything left in the hose, it stays in the hose. Okay, Take nice. it and feed it right back into, sure. the, into the tube there. Electric power cord reels are standard on all models of nice. the Riverstone in it. On it. Power, you said? Yes, sir, that's an electric nice. power cord reel there. Uh, all of our docking stations are, you know, well-defined here. This unit here, this water inlet, 
city ward inlet here there's your black tank flush when you have dual black tanks we actually add a second black tank flush here on the outside to handle the second black tank so oh, cleaning it up is, is, is a breeze it's really really easy on that um of course Self-explanatory here, if you want a dry camp, city water camp, and, and all the other pieces here. Certainly. And, uh, all these areas have lights in it, you turn off and on. Your satellite cable hookups are all right here. If you do an exterior or a remote satellite system, or we plus we have it wired to the roof if you want to do a roof mount. You okay. can do a roof mount and uh, tie it in all there. Electrical, if you would. What, do we have any inverters? What do we? Uh... Electrical, you have 50 power, 50 amp power cord. You plug in the 50 amp service. We have a converter, which is standard in all units. Certainly. Okay, that converts 110 power into 12 volt power. It keeps all your 12 volt system off of electricity when you're plugged into shore power. Now, when you're running this unit here on battery power, I do have an inverter in here. There is an inverter. Oh, yes, sir. There's a, there's a huge inverter in a here. A big, what, 1100? 1500. 1500. 1500. Okay. That inverter is not only designed to run the refrigerator, it'll run your main TV in your living area, it'll run your bedroom TV, it'll run the home theater seating that's in front of your main TV so you can recline mm -hmm. off of batteries, and we run one extra outlet that will run minor stuff. Plus, all of our units come standard 190 watt solar panel on top. Wow. Standard. Okay. With the ability to add two more of those panels if you want, so it gives you three 190 watt panels tied into the solar system that comes standard on this unit. So how many how many lithium batteries could you upgrade to run? You know. Well, uh, depending so on the how size. Much storage you want to take out? <laughs> no, no. Well, it depends. They you can, can overload one or the other. You got to be in balance. The right. the panels with so the I battery. I see people and, with a slide out truck people, here filled with batteries. And people run out of water before they do power. So you don't need we too do much. two power. We do two trays here. Nice. You can, you can put four. Stack, you can put four batteries. Uh, a lot of people go to four six volts. It will fit in here. We do the wider tray for it to happen. Or you do 12, two 12 volts or four 12 volts, whatever way you want to do it. But what's really nice is when you go to check these batteries, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Unless you have this system here. <laughs> and both trays will slide out. It makes checking these and filling these reservoirs so much easier. So nice. And that is standard. She doesn't seem to be worried about any of this. I'm not sure why. You got two 40 pound propane tanks instead of two 30. Two, like right. Oh, nice. Yeah, you get. There's that system. Yep, yeah, there's your water manifold system. And there's that big fat inverter, too. There's their inverter. Also, yes. most people, when they get a flat turn in an RV, they'll call the roadside service. Sure. But if you're one of those that like to do it by themselves, have you ever pulled out a 17 and a half inch steel wheel? with uh, six, a 16 fly tar from underneath one of these things. No. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what we've done like and nobody... The transmission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we've done like nobody else has done, and I don't understand why, we have it on a slide rail tray. You pull a pin on the door side, on the off door side, which is always the, you know, where the road is. Right, right. The tray slides to the door side, so which is hit. away from the road where you don't get hit, <laughs> out, then you take the tire off and you take it, pick it up. Nice. I guess everybody else thinks they're in England, so, you know. <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> so, but that is a standard spare tire holder on our units, huh. okay? Excellent. And it's so easy to m maneuver and get to, sure. and it just makes it real, real easy on it. We do 5 8 tongue and groove plywood flooring. We actually do half-inch sunburn plywood decking on top of the roof before uh -huh. we put that TPO roof. Okay. Not the 3H OSB that everybody else uses. Sure. You know, we use half-inch plywood. And the wall construction. Wall construction, we use floor joists, 16 inch on center, all aluminum, glued and screwed. 16 on center. 16 on center, glued, glued and screwed. And screwed. We actually do a hung glass wall. We don't laminate our wall. Okay, yeah. that allows me to run no wiring. delamination. No delamination, but it also allows me to run electrical wiring into your, all your side walls, so you can actually have outlets and wall switches and everything else on the exterior walls. If you go to those laminate walls, you don't find any of that. They're always either on the interior wall or underneath cabinets. Right. Very inconspicuous, hard, hard to get to, hard to use. You know, if you want to add an outlet, guess what? I can do it. They can. Add outlet nice yes. windows. So, windows. Windows. All we use is, is, is a dual pane 
thermal windows. They are dual pane. Yes, sir. We don't build them. We don't build a unit without dual pane. That's there, there's standard. been there's been some talk of them coming out with a a single <coughs> pane, but it's thicker, much thicker, or some some technology is supposed to be down the line. I don't know if that's happening. It'd be nice. It may help bring the weight down a little bit. When you do dual pane windows, they're probably twice the weight of standard windows. Yeah. So that weight on uh, one of those solitudes or something like that. Right. You added the dual pane option, you're going to be adding about 600 pounds of weight to whatever it's then, already capped at. Then we right. use the frameless windows, which most people are, but where we are different, notice I have a frameless window even in the sides of oh, the my slide. Oh, you do. And I can open these windows so you can get a cross breeze if you want. Dryer. Dryer vent. That's a dryer vent. Yes, sir. That's oh. a dryer vent. I mean, the angels have been singing pretty much this whole Believe interview. Believe it or not, that's standard. Washer and dryer is standard in this unit. Maybe when they talk about washer and dryer units sucking, it's because they're not vented. Right. Uh, it's normally yeah. an all-in-one, and they don't vent the dryer. When you don't vent a dryer, it's not going to operate. It's not going to work. It's not. Okay. There's your vent for your uh, under your, your your stove hood right here. Oh my goodness. So that's always vented out as well. Even your slide toppers are metal wrapped as well. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. I'm thinking back to when we had the upstairs um, washer dryer room in uh, Maryland when mm. we had it done, and the guy, I don't, the builder stuck a whole towel in the dryer vent because he was trying to prevent. I guess they had it open. They were worried about things coming up the dryer tube, mm -hmm. but they never pulled it out. And for six months, I couldn't dry any of my clothes. <laughs> because there, was, there wasn't any of that <laughs> ventilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an right. dryer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, this is a crappy dryer. You were looking at the grand design products? Yeah. No, no. I, well, I've looked... On, look on YouTube. There's a lot of fans of Grand Design. Oh, yeah. no, okay, no, no, no. and I don't see anybody speaking about Riverstone except me because right. I'm a fan. I believe this is right. the way we're going to go. Right, and, and Grand Design's good unit if you're going weekend. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it's a good weekend unit. No, no, if ands a budget about it. They're just not designed to do what we're designed to do. Okay, we just taken that pinnacle and just in, just. Increase the bar. <laughs> we do the Truma tankless on on demand water heater standard. Okay. Okay. You have they don't have an that. unlimited supply of hot water. As long as you have water and 12 volt power, you and propane, you have hot water. That's beautiful. And we'll just wow. continually have it. You want to take an hour long shower and get out and you say, hey, you leave no time or water for me. No. You we get know, in and take another hour long shower. And we have a daughter that takes an hour shower. Right. So. so it can happen here. Okay. Now. Where we differ is that we use the Truma, which is an option in DRV Mobile Suites, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not standard for them. They do a 12-gallon gas electric. We do the Truma standard, okay? The Truma differs from the Gerard and the Suburban tankless design by it is not a dual stage like those two units were 20 or 40,000 BTU. This is a multi-stage 0 to 65,000 BTU unit. Mm -hmm. So this would truly get you 120 degree water at the faucet you have to use cold water to tame it down so you can use it, okay? But this unit also will winterize itself. You can okay. turn the button on it and we'll, we'll winterize it, okay? So no taking in to get winterized? No. Also, if you want to decalcify, like because on a regular tank water heater, you have the, the decalcification rod that's in there, okay? Mm -hmm. That you can change out because it just eats it up. Sure. Okay. On it, On a tankless, you don't have that. There's no tank. So how do you decalcify a tankless? Gerard and Suburban, you can't. Mm. The only way to decalcify it is to change, change it, out. it out. Okay. Yeah. This thing comes where you pull this out. There's a piece of the filter that comes out. You add calcification tablets to it, put it in, hit it, and it does a cleaning process. So this unit will clean itself. The um, all interior and exterior lights are, are LED on it. We do have reverse lights on our unit. So when you do throw the reversion back up, it will light up the area behind you. Okay. Four camera system. This only gives you the rear view camera, but it gives you the side view cameras as well, plus the security camera over the door. So that's an option? That is an option, yes, sir. Okay. We, we pre-wire for cameras. That's standard for us. All my dealers stock it with some sort of camera system, whether you do just a rear view camera or they do the four camera system. And right now, 80% of them do the four camera system. My my F450 came with a kit and it came with a camera and like wires that I can right. connect. Mm -hmm. um, 
Could that connect to this? That will not connect to that. It will. It has a, a seven inch monitor it comes with. So it has its own monitor. That you can set in your truck. Once okay. you're finished, you can pick that monitor out of your truck, bring it in the house, set it in the house, and you can use your camera as a security system. Oh, nice. Thank you for your time, sir. You've been wonderful. You, you answered, an, answered so many questions I had. I knew these were quality units. I've been researching online what we're going to get, and it just, it, like, it's easy to pe for people to get mistaken this with like redwood or something. It ain't the same thing. It's, it's just same. not even. Yeah. It's not the same. We we, we we go like I said. We go a step beyond. We set the bar higher. Uh, we do some things that you know, like like this glue and screw technology, 16 inch on center. The reason we do it is because it's a better build. Most manufacturers won't do it because it's so labor intense. Mm, gotcha. And, and you can make a cheap the wall. You can make a wall a lot cheaper when you just laminate it together mm -hmm. and do perimeter aluminum framing and two inch. That's that's yeah, easy. That's we'll the easy way out. Gotcha. We don't take the easy way out. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful day. You too. Oh, good. This would be the power bank with the solar on board. Hot water heater, instant water, instant hot water, not instant, on demand hot water. Yeah, these are nice. These are nicer than your average yeah, bear. You know what I mean? Cool. Like you look at it and they eh, got this layout, that layout. Right. You need to know what it's built out of. <laughs> what are the axles made? What are the walls made out of? Right. You understand what I mean? It's pretty solid. Oh yeah, these are, nice. these are nice. Well, I already knew, but he. he... Oh, a bunch of them. There's... See the soft clothes. I don't see Lux here, though. Do you? Lux, Lux only sells themselves. They're a factory only. They're factory direct. You have to go to Indiana if you want to buy a Lux. They don't have Lux here. Our friends just ordered a brand new Lux, and they're nice, but holy. They're nice. They're expensive. Ooh, they're expensive. The problem is Lux, and they build a nice unit, but they have no deal in that for it. So you have more stuck in the ground. Exactly. You're in trouble. Washing dryer? Yes, sir, standard. This is much like Vented. Ray or Monica? Vented. 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 It's also got a dishwasher, sir. Vented. It only has a two person kitchen. Thank you. Yeah. There's only two of us, sir. It's two bathrooms. There's a bathroom up here? Half and a half. This is your half bath. Oh, it's also down. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that. You're exactly right. You look, boom, 
it's only got two axles. I don't care if, like the Lux, you can upgrade to 9,000 pound axles, okay, but it's still only two, that's 18,000 pounds. 20% of that, we're still good. But when we get into the big toy haulers, the quality, you know, I mean, upper quality, okay, DRV, LX455, like we saw at the thing, those, you know, or even just the front living Nashville, which we were looking at, which we're still like, DRV Nashville, that's a 44 foot unit. And uh, their frames are just so rigid, they use wood, you know. So, the 24,000 pounds. 20% 20 of 24,000 pounds is 4,800. You don't have any weight room, you know, put any payload left at that kind of rating to put your heads and all your supplies in your truck. And your, you know, once you add a, I don't know, generator goes into the front, that's going to add some more weight to the front. You know, that, that wasn't balanced at the factory. But that generator seems to go right up front, right? So I'm sure that weight's going to... That's why. You know, I was online looking up going, oh man, I want to find that this isn't true. You know, okay, you first get a truck, you go, it'll tow 27,500 pounds. Sweet. I look at GVWRs of trailers and they're, as long as they're under 27,500, I'm good, right? Wrong. You always max out a payload before you do tow rating. Well, I shouldn't say always. I'm not the genius in it necessarily, but just learning as far as I know, yeah, we're just learning with you. So anyway, I, but I like anyone else bought my truck, going okay to hit a tow twenty-seven five hundred, right? That's what it says. I can look up on Ford, and. Uh, so I think I'm good. And then I start thinking and looking at payload and realizing 20% of the payload. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Some we can't do. What do us for a loop is our friends just went to Lux and ordered a brand new. I, I, don't, I don't remember the model they ordered. But, but they, tr they were trying to sell them one of those big Chevy trucks, like 6,500. I think it is. Like, why would they try to sell that truck? I mean, and then they said, well, you kind of need it for the big toy haulers. And I'm like, what? F-450, you know, that's pretty much the biggest you get until you get to a commercial truck. And some try to consider that commercial, they say. We did get insurance with Geico, no problem. Mm -hmm. So, just to let you know that, just let them know it's not a flatbed. <laughs> So your question was, that's why I thought that. So I've been looking up online, you know, oh, towing in it. And I, all I found was, you know, reaffirming 20%, 20% of the GBWR is, is going to be on your payload of your truck. And I just, I kept reading and I read discussion boards and I kept looking and looking and, but both of them said what they max out about. So we're talking about a LX455 is a 44 foot toy hauler three 8,000 pound axles. It's a 24,000 pound GVWR. I mean, we got a lot of options on our truck. It's a King Ranch. So when you really look at it, what's left over on our payload is 46,046 pounds. A lot less than you think it would be, right? A lot less than I thought it was. I thought we were saying 27,000. That is the fifth wheel tow rating yeah men we have to study this stuff yeah it's on us and you'll see in the videos what am i looking at the outside what's it made out of what's it built out of how does this work how does that work that's where the meat is girls oh i like the color that is not <laughs> true i was like You're where's like that, where's the know? washer and dryer <laughs> no but i get that no i get that too <laughs> Everyone I got on, I was like, where's the washer and dryer? And everyone was like, oh, no, we didn't put it on this one, but, you know, we can add it as an option. Yeah, but it was on that Riverstone, wasn't it? 